Hello YouTube, this is Karakix bringing you another PGA Tour 2K23 video. Today we've got another challenge circuit walkthrough for this week. <clears throat> I believe it is week 10. Voice is a bit scratchy, not feeling too great, but I have a match to do today, so I'm recording this earlier in the day for you all on Saturday. A lovely Saturday, nice and cool. Chicago Golf Club is a real life course. So, it has been brought to you in game by Pitt1976, who has recreated it. It is the first real course of the season for CC. Um, 2033 LPGA US Open host, um, which makes sense why we are choosing to do it this week on the challenge circuit because of the name of the tournament. So it made perfect sense for Q to schedule this as we are going to the Seabanks Dance Studios Bel Air Shootout. And why is that the perfect name? Well, it was explained by Q. Charles Steam Shovel Banks, Seabanks, was a protege of CB McDonald who designed it. So it is a heavily template course. And I will explain what templates are. I am not a course knowledge aficionado i'm not somebody who knows real life golfs that much but i have gotten plenty of explanations from various designers who come into my stream like matt f27 mayday q maddie from canada axel von fersen mvp manatee all these people have come by my channel and are wonderful enough to give me information about them there are a lot more designers in the community who also come by. They're all really cool people. I love to shit talk them though. So I chose round two conditions because they are very interesting. So let's take a look at them. We'll look at the defaults first. Uh, firm, firm and quite quick greens. Um, I don't believe we see default greens at all, luckily. Otherwise these would be in the 160s. It is the fastest green you will see is fast, so 155 greens. And in round one, you have default firmnesses and greens. But in round two, we get spicy. Very, very spicy. Black tees, pin two, or round two. Medium, east, the wind goes up from low. Very firm fairways, very firm greens, and moderate green speeds. This will be a challenge for a lot of you. So you're going to have to get used to it. Morning and light cloud time of day weather. So let's get into it. This is a very interesting golf club. I've played it before. Something I played a couple times in 2K21. Um, so here we go. Template courses. They're very, you know, shall we say rounded. Very square blocky. As you can see. Fairway. Very straight. Turn sharply when we get to bunkers. Bunkers are usually very manicured in, in a specific way like this, where it's very long, very, very artificial looking. And if we look at the green, it is a bit of a square and there are different squares to signify different templates. Now, I don't know all the templates. I'm not going to be able to tell you everything about the course. But let's see what we can do. We'll start by getting it into the fairway. And as long as you're in the fairway on a course like this, you're in really good state. You have to make sure you're in the fairway. So uphill. Doesn't play as much on a lob wedge. I'm going to turn off true shot because I don't want to get my... I don't want you guys to see... All that, it's extraneous data. You should see the course as, as I play it, right? Oh, very slow. Which won't be the worst thing in the world. Bit of a breaker now. And this pin position, not too fancy. Just make sure you're not on the left. Make sure you're not short. I don't know if I hit that. Might just come up. Yeah. Just died. 
broke a little bit more because I didn't hit it with the power. It needed. All right, hold two. Again, as you can see, you get this straight runway basically down with little bumps and barriers in the way. Bunkers and rough, but it is light rough mostly until you get out to these um, thick, the thick grass. So the name of the game is get in the fairway and be happy. All right, so we got some camber on this fairway. And a pin tucked in the back. So obviously, you want to try to land it here, here, here. If you have some spin on your on your club, like landing it closer to the hole, works out well. You have wind in your face, so it's going to help keep it from going too far. Um, but this is a tight pin location. So choose choose what you think you can do. Um, a little bit on the right is safer. Obviously, putting up the hill isn't the end of the world either. So if you end up a little long, but you're down the hill, it's not the worst thing. Now, the wind did turn in my face a little bit more, which made this a little bit shorter than I wanted to. But I didn't feel like adjusting my club and stuff. Don't know if I hit that again. I might die. Just gets there. I'm a little low on the power right now. I need to sit up properly. Take it a little serious. All right, we get our first par three. Again, this is the. These are these templates. They're very square. They're modeled after other holes you've seen in real life. In this scenario, we do have a bit of slope at the back that should funnel us back towards the hole if we end up too long um but ideally we land it short and we run it up it's uphill the entire way so there's no fear of of landing it short and it just rolls forever it will stop so choose what you want here either use the backstop if your clubs dictate it like if you have a hybrid in your bag you don't have a long three iron or play it short if you have the clubs for it. Wind is being very obnoxious right now. A little fast. Should still be a very good shot here. I had to full loft it because the wind was starting to turn. Might have hit that hard. I did. Unfortunate. This time we were 2% over. My classic 2% over. But we had a makeable putt. And that's what's important. Alright, we got our first par 5. Bit pin tucked to the left. So the more right you are, the more fairway you'll give yourself. Um, On this right hand side. And the better angle you'll have into this hole. Because the further left you are, if you have to hit less, if you have less green to work with, this gets tricky, especially from longer ranges. If we look at our, at our, you know, yardage book, if we get like 330, we still have 223 in. It's going to be a 4 iron or a 3 iron. It's quite some distance, so if you're brave, try to hug the left side or try to hug the right side. Don't do what I just did. Because I'm going to show you that this isn't very easy because this all funnels to the right and it's uphill. You don't have a ton of landing yardage. Now it is a CC course, so you do have more than, say, a plat course. So are you willing to aim for here? And then if you fast, you're in the rough or bunker. Are you going to play safer and try to be more in the middle of the green, but it's going to roll out to the right and you're going to be left with an uphill longer putt? You have to make that decision for yourself. I'm going to go for the precision shot. So I get a five iron in. A little wind at my back, so I need to loft it to cut out a little bit of distance. Get that slight fast. 
I just gave myself enough breathing room to make it up here. But as you can see, because of the tight angle, it's not super uphill there. It's going to kick far. It's going to bounce and roll out. If I had hit it shorter and less in there, it would have bounced to the right a bit more. But it would have been more uphill. See, I hit the flatter part of this area. I hit, like, up here. Where it's not as uphill on this left side compared to the right side. So, you have to figure out what your plan of attack here is on this hole. Playing on this left side is harder on the fairway. But the right side is protected by a bunker. So, if you can get over the bunker... It makes more sense to play over there. But maybe you don't have the club distance for it, in which case you need to play for the left or the middle of the fairway. Maybe put some shape on it. All right, so this round we don't have wind at our back. So in a more conducive wind round, you might want to put some loft and spin and try to get some extra distance on your club and see if you can get it to the hole or overpower it. Um, as for me, I'm not interested in that. I'm going to cut some distance down so I could put myself in a good pitching wedge range. Or lob wedge pitch range. Oh, I got it kind of far there than I wanted it. But I think we're still in range because full lofting my club here gets me to around 54 yards. Pretty simple pin location, so just send it. Yeah, perfect distance for me. I needed to cut some distance out, or else I would have been in flop to weird flop chip range. Alright. A shorter par 4. You can go for this. You can try to go over this green and bunker and get it really close to the hole. But I say there is no reason to. I would lay up. So, let's say we go 250. We're at 146 out. If that's good distance for you, that's pretty good. So this would be probably around 240, 245, 250. I kind of like this three iron. Ooh, way too fast, but we're okay. Yep, 254. We left ourselves with 141 into the pin. Which is about right distance for me. I have a pitching wedge. I can loft it a bit. Slope at our feet takes us to the right a little bit more. Wind is taking us to the right, so make sure you give yourself enough room. I also shake to the right, so I have to aim really far left. But as you can see, we landed short enough. Bounce, get it to one hop and stop because of the uphill line, and leave ourselves with the putt. Very easy birdie there. This is a course conducive for scoring. So even with these very firm conditions, because the greens are not fast, we can manage the distances pretty well. So remember, let's keep that in mind. We are on firmer greens, so it's going to want to bounce and roll out. You have some wind in your face to help you out with that scenario, but do keep it in mind. Your ball wants to go pretty far. I think this is what you call Radon. The slope all on the one side is funneling towards the side of the where the pin locations are. So in this scenario, the design of the course is used like a lower, um, lower lofted club, a longer club, a hybrid, a three wood. I guess back in the day you would have this would have been designed for a wood. And you would just hit it somewhere on the right side. And then it would start funneling to the left. And it's a very cool design. So you can use this right side. Even down here, if you aim for in this area, it's going to kick to the left. It's going to funnel to the hole. If you slow it, you might still be okay. It might go here. It might end up somewhere over here. And short, but you have a chance. I'm going to put a little bit of loft onto this club. Because there isn't a ton of wind in my face. And this is all downhill. So I need this to stop eventually. Oh, really good off the stick. So let's see it bounce. 
very firm. And roll to the left. So we didn't aim super far over to the right where we could get more of the slope. But as you can see, it funnels towards the hole. It's a beautiful type of course design. This little template hole. It's a very common, if you go to template courses, you're going to see a lot of those types of par 3s and the longer par 3s. There's going to be that big sloping curve towards the hole. All right, you have bunker on the left. You can play it short here. Make sure you're not in the bunker. As long as you don't touch the bunker, you're still 115 out. You're going to be wedged in. So play it short or bomb it if you like. But try to avoid that bunker. I'm going to make sure I get out of that bunker. I'm going to make sure we are not in that bunker. I'm going to cut down my three wood just a little bit more. And leave myself in wedge territory. And in this scenario, very good wedge territory. Big slope off to the left. If you aim a little bit right and short, it'll kick. And then probably stop because if you're using a sand wedge, it's going to stop. We're on very firm green, so one hop, a pretty big one hop, and stop, especially with window your back. So we're going to aim around here. We're going to look at our slope at our feet. We're going to take the wind into consideration, and then we're going to hit. Oh, I hit that very fast, which means it's going to get the distance to get to the hole. Longer than I want because of wind at our back. But you take this... You take this. You take this for birdie all the time. You don't mind too much. We just missed low. I think I underhit it a little bit. Alright. Well, just don't get to the water. Ooh. What the hell? Alright, well... We survived the very fast. Don't be short here. You can land in this area and it will bounce because of the very firms, but don't don't try landing on this red slope. It's just gonna die and, and go back. I'm gonna deal off just slightly. Ooh, the slow is dangerous. We just get up. That bounce helps. The very firm helps us in this scenario. We have a fairly straightforward putt for birdie. Tougher pin location. You have a slope in the back. So being a little long is not the end of the world. Especially with these very firm conditions. Just don't be short. There's no reason to be short on a hole like this. Perfect. So I played towards the edge because I'm a psychopath. But you do not have to play that aggressive. You can play it a little long. And you'll be safe. Made a good putt there. Alright, another par 4. Again, this is shorter. If you have longer clubs in your bag, it makes more sense to lay up than try to challenge those bunkers. If you have wind at your back or something, you can go for the bunkers a little more. Because then you'll have a pitch in. You should easily clear it with wind at your back, but do be wary. Okay. Pin at the top of the hill. Try not to be long left, or else you might be off into Narnia. But, uh, and don't be short because of the red slope. It's going to be one annoying chip back up the hill. A little fast. Just got to hope it dies. It does. Not my favorite shot today, but... We live. End of the day, it's about getting yourself in a good range consistently. So, we are doing that at least. Giving ourselves good putts at it. Alright, fairway seems to have some camber. 
So if you hit an unfortunate bump like right here, there's a chance it goes off to the right. So try, if you're going to play this, try to play it on the left side. Avoid that bunker that's far. Um, you can put some shape onto this, like a draw. Draw into the wind and the slope will kill the ball. And we hit the top of the slope. So it bounces straight. Beautiful. All right. You have a bit of a bowl situation here. So if you are in the rough, you can use the features like this red slope back here to bring the ball back. You also can play it short and get it to kick forward from here. We're going to go pin hunting because we can. And we're confident in our abilities. But there is plenty of places to work with on a hole like this. Ah, just stayed straight. I thought it would start turning a little bit. But say lovey. Alright. So this is another example of what I was talking about earlier with that with that bowl feature on that par three. It extends to this par three too. And the issue is if you generate just a little too much speed because you have wind at your back and a much less loft and you have less loft on your club, you could be in danger. So be careful. This could get over the top. So if you're a left-handed golfer and you hit it fast, you're you might be in danger here. Obviously, it's gonna be tough to get it super close to the hole. We're gonna do our best. A lot of slope protecting this this uh this pin. This should be good. Be a little long. But we're not on the right. We're not flirting with that. That slope that can bring us over the edge, which would be devastating. We get it. Didn't go right at my feet, but luckily it didn't start breaking until the very end. All right, look at this. You can go for this. Just try to be in the middle of the green. Simple as that. It's downhill elevation, wind at your back. If you have this wind, you're in. You have a lucky day. You have a chance of getting this on the green. Oh. Of course, if you black fast it for the second time, you're in trouble too. In this scenario, we need to be very careful. Slope is pretty severe. Need to make sure we get enough power to get on the green. And we do. We get it to stop with the spin. Tricky little spot. So you have to be willing to accept those risks if you go for the green here. You might have to splash or chip on a front position. That's tough sometimes. Alright, here we go again. Because there are no dangers, I'm just going to send it. Because I can just pitch shot my second shot. Gonna lower the distance a little bit by de-lofting. Oh no. Well, we had a flub in our swing. A little bit of an error. Unfortunate. Let's see if we can survive it. No. Where did our tempo go? Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> this happens sometimes. Sometimes you lose your tempo. It's can you fight back? Can you survive two missed tempos? Can you get it close enough to where you have a putt for par and save yourself? The blushes of an embarrassing 391 yard bogey. That's a very simple hole. No reason for you to do that. All right. So we have a bit of a dog leg to the right. So when you're aiming this shot, keep in mind, your ball is probably going to go straight unless you shape it. 
So how do you want to shape it? If you shape it with a fade, there's a chance if you hit this, the camber right, that it rolls and bounces to the right. You can put some fade, vroom, send it down there. Um, you can hit it straight and just let the wind do some of the work for you and aim more to the right. That's what I'm going to do. I don't want to lose distance. Where did all these fats come from? We'll take un practice swing on this next shot. Just to show you, sometimes I lose tempo. That's okay. That's how you fight back from it. And at the back, if you have too much speed, it's going to want to keep rolling a little bit. You do have a slope back here to protect you a bit. So, not the end of the world. You get it just right. You can get it to funnel, 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 go to the left, go to the left. And you'll be like right here. That would be absolute perfect. Downhill lie at your feet. Not a lot of wind in my face this time. I'm going to loft it a bit. Slope to the right as well. Didn't take that practice swing. Luckily, we aren't super fast here, but it's still faster than I like. And we're off to the left. It's going to be a little more left than right. So it takes a little while to turn back. But it should turn back. Bang. Hit it a little hard, but uh, I'm not going to complain about an eagle. Un practice swing. Alright. A little better. So, front pin location. It's a tough shot. Get as much distance as you can on this, on this hole. Leave yourself a wedge in. Don't be in the rough. Still not feeling great about my swing, but got a couple hours to warm up before a match for in the Apex Hound match play. So I left myself a little too close. So like, if you don't like these pitch shots, be careful about sending it full like I just did. Because now I have to loft and spin this a little bit. We're slow. We are in danger, but we just get up there very firms. Sometimes very handy to land it short on purpose. Because it's still going to bounce. Finally, we end on a very short par 4 again. The, most of these holes are quite short. I'm going to hit a 3 wood. I don't want what just happened to me. I don't like the pitching wedge pitch. I want to be able to lob wedge. Like in this scenario, I like a lob wedge here. I'm going to loft it. Don't be too short, but... Uh, the fast are killing me right now. But we're surviving. And you don't need to bring your best tempo to score on a course like this. And we drain it for a 13 under with some pretty bad holes, some bad tempos here and there. It happens. You live with it. You move on. You survive. That's the important thing on a course like this is you shouldn't score every hole. Every hole is scorable though. So you have a little margin for error. You might make a mistake one hole, but you can make it up with an eagle on another. You might struggle on the par threes, but a lot of the par fours are very gettable. So as long as you don't concede too many strokes from mistakes and balance it out with some of the easier birdies that are available on this course, you're going to score well and charge up that leaderboard. So there you have it. Chicago Golf Club ported in by Pitt 1976. It's a good course, a real life course. It's realistic. It's going to be one of the easier courses of the year. That is going to be made harder by the conditions. We have a high wind round. 
in the cards in round three. There are some fast green speeds. You get twice fast green speeds. You're always playing from the back tees because they are pretty short. And this round is probably the most tricky of them because you get very firm greens and fairways. And even though the green speeds are a little less, very firm is always tough to manage without properly lofting or spinning your ball or landing it short enough. So that'll do it for me. Thank you for all. Thank you all for watching another CC walkthrough for TGC Tours. Good luck out there this week. Believe in you all. Thank you so much for watching recently. Thank you for the support. I know I've been a little quiet, but um, I am streaming a lot on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash carcakes. We are streaming more. I've got a shell of a guide written, so it's about actually editing the guide and, and writing it out and doing one big recording for it because I've done a lot of the clips which is kind of cool. So it's all about mashing it together and making the big, long introduction. So thank you all. I will see you soon. Take care. Love you guys. Mean it. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do. Peace out.